Welcome back my good people and in today's video we are going to talk about post exposure prophylaxis. We had talked about pre exposure prophylaxis into details and if you have not watched that video kindly click the link that appear up here so that you are well conversant with it or even in the description below so that uh, you enjoy that video into details. Now Today's video is very, very important because we are going to talk about PEP, that is post-exposure prophylaxis. Those antiretroviral drugs that we normally give you after you've been exposed to some risk that we are going to talk about that may even enable you to contract HIV. Now, we want uh, to prevent HIV from uh, getting into your system so that uh, you can't be infected. Now, before we... Uh, go further kindly please if you are new in this channel click this notification bell rate and subscribe turn it on for more videos that i will post and for my returning subscribers thank you so much again for coming back to this video and clicking it again i really appreciate your support that you've been giving us in this video i am very very happy for your comments your likes and your shares and continue sharing so that many people uh, to join us uh, in this channel. Now, before we talk more about PEP or post exposure prophylaxis, we want to talk about eligibility. Eligibility and the criteria we use uh, before we give you this particular drug. What are the points that we are going to consider so that we might we may give you these drugs uh, to help you? One. Post-exposure prophylaxis is normally given within 72 hours of you being exposed to those particular items we are going to talk about. So uh, we get that many people normally come post 72 hours and uh, this one uh, does not depict uh, uh, the good criteria for giving you this particular drug. So as soon as possible or within that span of uh, 72 hours. Now, uh, when you have been exposed and uh, you are HIV negative at baseline, meaning we are supposed to do HIV testing and counseling and to confirm whether you are HIV negative or HIV positive. If we find that uh, you are HIV positive, then uh, we are going to also continue with the post-test counseling according to the algorithm and then we'll put you on the full course of antiretroviral drugs but when you are hiv negative we are going to uh, give you the pep drugs that we are going to talk about and mind you uh, there are some people who normally report the facility at odd hours that uh, the hiv testers the hhts are not available at that particular time we cannot deny you uh, PEP, we will give you uh, maybe one or two uh, doses uh, for that particular time and then we refer you the following day for full course of testing before we put you on the full course of uh, uh, HIV uh, preventing measure drugs that is post exposure prophylactic drugs. Now when there is an exposure we have two types of items that we should be able to consider. The exposure and the material. So when we talk about exposure, what do we mean by exposure? When you are sexually exposed, when you involve yourself in sexual intercourse or you've been forced, that is in cases of rape or in cases of defilement or majority of people reporting with the burst condom. So when there's burst condom and when you are sexually uh, raped and even defiled, uh, that is number one of the exposure we are talking about, the mucous membrane exposure. Uh, clinical health workers, those who normally work in the hospital, the laboratories, they are exposed uh, to these particular items that uh, you get a splash in your eye or in your nose or even your oral cavity, then you are very, very eligible for being given PEP when you have made sure that you are HIV negative. Uh, an intact skin you have some cut wounds in your skin and perhaps you are not wearing gloves and uh, you come into contact with blood uh, then you are very very eligible 
uh, for PEP or even percutaneous injury or, we call, uh, or what we call uh, uh, parenteral exposure, you are able, we will be able to uh, give you PEP. Now, materials that uh, we are talking about here is, uh, for example, when you have blood, when being exposed to blood, uh, or you have been having bloodstained fluids all over your body, uh, when you are doing procedures and uh, you get exposed to blood, or uh, even breast milk. Breast milk is an exposure. Though research has been done about breast milk versus breastfeeding versus HIV, and the typical uh, pre-exposure that we talk about in terms of percentage is normally not known. So, uh, breast milk is not a contraindication for PEP, and also when you are sero-exposed, uh, we do not deny you from breastfeeding your child. That is when you are HIV positive, we are not uh, denying you from breastfeeding your child so long as you follow the algorithm of uh, the drugs that are used and we will make sure that your child is safe. Those who have been exposed to semen and vaginal uh, secretion, uh, the snivial fluids, pleural fluids, for example, when you are doing tapping for those who have pleural effusion, this is now for medics or even when you are during, uh, when you are enduring surgery and you come into contact with the pericardial uh, fluid, uh, this one may warrant you to take PrEP. Or when you are doing lumbar puncture and all of a sudden CSF splashes in your eye or your mouth or in your nose, uh, you should be having uh, this PEP with you. And uh, for the laboratory technicians, those who normally do blood cultures, uh, those who normally take uh, a blood for viral loads or even CD4 uh, or blood culture per se, when you are exposed to this kind of material, that is the blood, then you are a very, very uh, good candidate for uh, uh, this particular PEP. Now, contraindication of PEP, which particular people are not eligible for this particular drug? When you know that you are HIV positive or you've done HIV test or you come at the time that we can be able to do testing and we find that you are HIV positive then you are not eligible meaning that we are not going to give you PEP but we are going to do more counseling to you and uh, to follow the algorithm of testing and counseling and then we initiate uh, the antiretroviral as soon as possible. Uh, now when you have been exposed to fluids that are uh, do not pose great risk of HIV like tears, tears, uh, non blood stain saliva. Remember, blood stain saliva when you are kissing somebody and he has oral sores in the mouth or he has bleeding gums, is a candidate for PEP. You can get HIV through that. But when you have a non blood stain saliva during the kissing, uh, that one does not pose a great risk. Uh, when you have been exposed to urine or even uh, sweat, then you are not a candidate for pre uh, for post exposure prophylaxis. Of course, when you are a medic and uh, you have needle stick injury or uh, uh, you uh, you have bruises and uh, of course uh, it is bleeding, then you should be washing that size with clean running water and soap and to leave it to bleed freely but do not squeeze do not squeeze or rub this one will cause tissue damage and will uh, make uh, the blood to uh, flow uh, very very fast to the tissues that are not affected and this might pose more threat uh, to you now before we initiate uh, post exposure prophylaxis of course this is antiretroviral drugs that must follow uh, the algorithm of uh, 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 being issued meaning we'll do thorough counseling before we initiate this particular drug uh, because uh, we might even talk of the side effects of these drugs some will have nausea vomiting tiredness uh, and even loss of appetite those ones you should be well conversant with for the first few weeks that uh, when you start this particular drug and the hiv testing is key it's, it's mandatory for this but as, as i said earlier that we cannot deny you the drugs we will first give you maybe one or two pills when uh, the H hts is not available come the following day we do full testing and counseling and then we initiate this particular drug within 72 hours
Of course, there's some laboratory investigation that uh, we may do, like checking your creatinine level, your HB level, and even hepatitis B, because uh, uh, these drugs, my, there are some drugs that we may use in PEP, in, in a PEP that may be reducing your blood levels, especially when you are using uh, zidovudine, or even may be so toxic to your kidney. Uh, mostly we give tenofovir, and it is not very, very uh, feasible uh, for those. And of course, we'll be doing follow-up at 7, 14, uh, 28, and 12 uh, weeks, uh, so that we are be sh sure that uh, you are uh, really adhering to this drug at the seventh day or even adhering at the 14th day or adhering at the 28th day. On the 28th day, we'll do retesting because this is the time that you will be finishing this particular drug and then we follow up again uh, after uh, 12 weeks of completion of PEP. So it's very, very vital that adhering is very, very key. Of course, also we can do other uh, treatment like prevent pregnancy in case of uh, those who have been defiled or raped will, um, will, will give you what we call emergency contraceptives. Of course, tetanus for those tetanus for those who have skin abrasions and exposure, and also will uh, give uh, uh, will give drugs against sexually transmitted infection. And this is very very vital so that uh, you do not get the STIs. Now, the typical drugs that we normally use, as I've said earlier, uh, we, I'm going to give you the pictorial way or the pictorial nature of these drugs uh, in this particular video so that you are well conversant. If you followed me keenly when we were talking about drugs used in uh, PrEP, uh, there are some that we are also going to borrow. And when we are issuing PEP, we are much, so also much ready and we are targeting your weight and also the age. For example, when you are less than 15 years of age and you are weighing less than uh, 30 kgs, the best drug for you uh, is uh, Lamivudine, uh, Abacavir, and Dolutegravil. Dolutegravil, as you can see them in, in the pictorial manner there. But there are also an alternative drugs that uh, we can give for a person presenting with the less than uh, 30 kilograms and is less than 15 years, that is AZT, that is Zidovudin, Lamovudin, Dolutegravir. Or we can also add what we call atazan, uh, Lopinavir, Rotonavir, sorry, Lopinavir, Rotonavir. Uh, the ideal of PEP is to use three antiretroviral drugs, but uh, because the PI uh, are normally having some weird side effects, so those who cannot tolerate the three, we normally give uh, tolerate lopinavir rotonavir, we can uh, give only as a T3TZ, DTG or as a T3TZ uh, lopinavir rotonavir. If at all, you can tolerate. Uh, for those individuals who are uh, less than uh, uh, 15 years and weighing 30 kgs and above, we'll give uh, TDF3TC, that is tonofovir, lamivudine, or FTC, DTG, that is uh, emtistabin, the way you are giving in PrEP, and uh, dolutegravir. But alternatively, we can also give tenofovir, lamivudin, plus uh, emtistabin, but we can also add another PI, which is atanavir, atazanavir, and ritonavir. But for those who, are way, uh, those who are greater than 15 years with any weight, uh, we can still give tenofovir, plus lamivudin, or emtistabin, plus dolutegravir. Or alternatively, we can go ahead and give uh, at, um, uh, TDF3TC, that is tenofovir lamivudine, or emtricitabine, or atazanavir ritonavir. Uh, because atazanavir ritonavir or lopinavir ritonavir has a very, very bad, weird side effect and many people do not tolerate. In fact, most of the prescription that we give, they normally come back that I cannot take this drug more than this because I have several nausea, tiredness, loss of appetite, their side effects are so, so weird. So we stick to uh, the ones that I've just uh, informed you. Now, if you feel that uh, uh, you've learned something about this particular video, kindly click the notification bell, return subscribe, turn it on for more videos that we we'll post. And again, if you have not watched that video about prep, Kindly, it is appearing somewhere here. Just click this link and watch this video 
and also go to the description you can find it otherwise thank you so much let's meet in another video muchas gracias